Hi, welcome to this tutorial today for a DLC in Blueprints V3. It's free on the marketplace this month. So I'm going to update the tutorial as requested by one of the commenters on the last tutorial um, for the V3. Uh, so Steam has not changed too much, but I'll go over it real quick. Um, so with Steam, you have just some branch checks. And keep in mind, you do need to be connected to the internet whenever you do these um, because they need to talk to Steam's backend servers. So this one's pretty simple. You just put in your app ID. You'll see it on the Steam. You'll see app ID. There's two. There's app ID and depot ID. Um, use the app ID for this and is game installed. So use the app ID for that. Um, and then, so that is basically it. You just use branch checks for these two. For this one, um, you want to use the DLC app ID. I guess you could also use like your main game's app ID, but this is because you want to check out. Steam does not have a native way to check out in game, so the most you can do is link to their store page um, and then handle it that way. They do have a way to um, check out, but it requires, from, from what I'm reading their documentation, it requires you owning servers and running HTTP requests and stuff, and um, that's beyond the scope of the plugin. So you would just open the store page, and then from there, the person will click buy and so forth. Um, on this, you have Steam overlaid a web page, so you would just HTTPS www. I believe it's. Uh, I'd have to look up. I believe it's that. I don't know. I'm not too good with URLs. Um, but then you would just do like www.google.com. Make sure it's the full web page with HTTPS and everything included. Um, otherwise, it may not work. So just remember that. Yeah, basically just input the app IDs, you get branch checks, it'll open the Steam Overlay with this, and Steam Overlay with this as well. Um, when you're doing these, you do need to have the game through Steam. Uh, you may be able to get it work with the um, Epic Games Launcher when we install Steam in just a second to the engine. But it works best if, you're, if the game's launched the Steam app and you've installed it and everything. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up Steam and install it to the engine real quick. Okay. So the first thing we need is we need to go to Edit, Plugins, and it should be installed whenever you install this, but just in case, do Online Subsystem Steam. Yeah, so the plugin should automatically install it. And then make sure you have the default Online Subsystem, should be installed. And I believe there's another one called Null, just have that just in case. Um, and yeah, the plugin should automatically enable these though. So shouldn't have to worry about that. The next thing you want to do is you want to go into your project folder, okay? And you want to go to config, uh, the one outside, not the one in save. Don't go to the one in save. Go to the one under binaries or .bs. Go to config and then go to default engine, I believe. I believe it is, let's see here. Yeah, so it should be the engine. And then um, you would just want to copy paste. I have it in the documentation. So you want to go there, um, the written documentation, and copy paste it from there. But you will copy paste um, this stuff if we go down, go down to the bottom. We'll copy paste this. This will um, make sure you change your app ID to the actual game app ID, not the DLC, the actual like main game. Because um, DLCs are a subset of the main game. So make sure you put that in there. And then once you do this, save it, and then restart the engine. And you should, whenever you play in standalone, whenever you play in standalone or through launch, um, you will have Steam pop up in the corner. If you don't, join the Discord and I'll be able to help you out with that. Uh, so yeah, so that's for Steam. That's basically it for Steam. For EGS, there's some extra nodes. Um, Epic has a more robust SDK. So there's a couple other things we can do. So um, with the EOS, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the person is logged in through the Epic Launcher. Okay, uh, you just use this node and then have a request. You can do like a branch check off the off the result. If you want to get the custom event, just drag off the result and do add custom event, and it'll create one. Um, the name doesn't really matter. I'm just using that one. So once you do that, you can get the whatever you want to do so you can open like a widget or main menu or something and just make sure you know they're logged in. Once they're logged in, 
you can do EOS purchase offer if you're in a store, EOS query DLC, or EOS store offers. I recommend doing query DLC first, so check if they own it. And if they do, this will return true. You just put that on branch check and it'll return true. And then if they don't, so if it's if they don't, you can do false and then do EOS purchase offer. And then what this will do is if you ever bought like in Fortnite or something, uh, the Epic overlay will pop up a little checkout screen just like you would in the Epic Game Store and the per person can purchase directly inside the game. So you will want to do the item name. So when you get into the uh, Epic Developer Portal, once you've paid your $100 and everything, you'll be able to set up a new DLC via Create Offer and then just give it a name, you know, uh, choose Consumable for Microtransactions and Add-on for DLC. Okay. So this is a microtransaction, but uh, you can also do it as DLC. Uh, so if we go into edit offer, we'll see two things here. We will see the offer ID and audience item ID. Um, and then we'll have the name up here. Okay. So on the, on the EOS purchase offer, when it says item name, the one you want to use is this up here, the title of the DLC or microtransaction. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind, Steam does not support microtransactions, only Epic Game Store. Steam can only be a one-time purchasable DLC. Epic can have both consumable, which is repeatedly purchased, and one-time purchase. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're using this. Um, so item name, you'll want to use the title. And then for these down here, for EOS Query DLC, Epic has the audience ID, which is if you scroll down is this right here. You can just copy that and then you can paste it in there. Um, I'm not gonna put it in there. And then you also have the store offers and what this does is it returns a whole bunch of stuff. So if you're making like an in-game store like Fortnite has, you can put in, you can return like the price, you can return the, um, the description of what your DLC store page says, you can return the item name, long description, all that stuff. You can return expiration dates, release dates. Um, so that's pretty cool. So if you're building an in-store, um, in store game, you definitely want to use EOS uh, store offers. So I just opened up my IDE. Um, and then you can also do a branch on here as well. So that way, you know, if, if they, if, if it picks up an item, it'll run it. And if not, then you can either put up an error message or whatever, um, but so forth. So that's pretty cool about that. The final thing that you need to know about EOS, or there's two more final things, is before you package, it's kind of annoying but you have to do this with Unreal Engine, is um, you want to go into the default engine again, and Epic has their own, their own, so I'm gonna pull that up over here. Okay, yeah, so they have their own um, online subsystem, which should also be installed when you install the plugin. Um, but it looks like it didn't, no, it did save. Okay, so if you're switching between Steam and Epic, what you can do is you can just comment out with two parentheses, like code. You just comment these out and then delete the comments. Um, it is kind of annoying that Epic requires you to do this before packaging, but that's, that's what you gotta do. Just copy paste from the documentation. I have one for EGS and one for Steam. Copy paste the um, code from there. It'll be easier than trying to type it out from the video. Um, you just set these up and you want to then, once you have this, you'll save it, okay? And when you go into the, um, the project settings, you should see under plugins, online subsystem EOS. If you don't see that, it should be installed when you install blueprints, but DLC and blueprints. But if you don't see that, go to online subsystem and type in EOS. Now it's in beta, but it's version 1.0, it should be good should be good to go. Um, what this does is it allows you to access the EOS SDK through Unreal Engine. So once you have that online subsystem EOS, you want to make sure you have overlay, social overlay, and you can do editor overlay. I have not tested this, um, so I don't know if it's working or not. And one nice thing about Epic Game Store is they actually have a pretty easy anti-piracy thing where if the user, do, if, if they don't launch it from the Epic Games launcher, then it won't open it'll give them an error I believe so you can make them where they have to basically uh, open the game from where they purchased it and if they can't open it from the Epic Games launcher it just won't open so that's a really nice feature that Epic has. What you need to do is you need to go to artifacts 
okay? Now, Epic Game Store has artifacts in their dev portal. This is a different thing, uh, sort of. It's sort of a different thing. So you want to go to artifact name, and I'm not gonna give you the client ID. However, I will tell you where to find it because this is specific to my game. So you want to just name it like, um, the name is, is important in just a second. I'll show you where. So I'll call this like live because Epic is built into multiple versions. They got stage, live, and dev. Honestly, you can name these whatever you want, but once you package your game, before you do that, you want to go up to default artifact name and you want to choose the one that you're going for. So dev, stage, live, and so forth, and that will um, choose the right one to use for packaging. Um, so for the client ID, client secret, product ID, sandbox ID, and deployment ID, you will be able to find that under, I'm going to tell you where it is, I'm not going to show it because it will show my stuff. But you'll go to your um, Epic Game Store dev portal, I can show you the where the button is. You'll go to your Epic Game Store portal, so right here, and then you'll go to product settings, and then that's all I'm going to show you there. But if you go to SDK downloaded credentials, you'll see it there. You'll see product ID, client ID, client secret, application ID, and sandbox ID. Remember, Epic Game Store is built into three sandboxes. You have dev, which is just internal, stage, which is used for you to send your build to Epic for them to review, and live, which is what players see. Um, so just keep that in mind. You want to then fill these in. There's another thing you need to do is there is a client encryption key, and this is for security. What you can do is you can go to um, browser ling uh, hex generator. I'll show you the website here in just a second. I believe it's I believe it's this one right here. Yep, and just go ahead and type in 64. I believe that's what they need. Let's see here. Yep, 64. And then just type in how many results you want. You only need one. Go ahead and generate the hex copy it, and then paste it in here. What this is, is it's basically a way for Epic servers to randomize the security key, um, so that way people can't easily hack into their servers. So it, it, it doesn't matter where you generate it from, it just matters that you have this, um, so that it can securely talk to Epic. Uh, just keep that in mind. And you need one for each each one of these. So just remember, when once you set these up, you will go in and before you package your game, you will choose the one that you use. For most cases, live is probably fine. I believe dev and stage work with live, um, but yeah. There's also another thing you need to do on the Epic, and I know Epic sounds like they have a lot, but you'll get, you'll get used to it once you go there, is you want to go to uh, identity providers, go to identity providers, and then go to, or I'm sorry, product settings, sandbox, and then go to live, and, and you need to do something here. You need to go to, I believe it's, not identity, deployments. You need to edit, you need to link an artifact. If you don't link your artifact from here, then the EGS won't recognize it. So the login with launcher and all this other stuff won't work. Um, so I know this sounds like a lot with Epic. You'll get used to it. It's really not that much. It's just a couple more steps. But, um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it with this. Um, just remember that whenever you are switching between Steam and Epic, go into your default engine.ini and change that, that code for the, from the documentation. Um, make sure that on online subsystem EOS, you have set up your, your artifacts, you've enabled the overlay, and you have set up the, uh, which one of these to package for. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, join the Discord and I will help you out. Thank you.